it's likely that you already know that you should buy a bunch of items and level your skills to improve your runescape account. But what are some free unlocks that every account should get? Well, let's find out. Whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. By free, I mean things that can be unlocked without spending money, so while also incredibly useful things like overloads and curses exist, they will not be a part of this list as they require you to train expensive skills. Unlocks such as the Zuck Cape, which are technically free, do require supplies and a solid expensive gear setup, so I will exclude them from this list as well. The first item we're going to talk about can be obtained by quite literally just picking it up. No, I'm serious. The Infernal Puzzle Box is an item you can pick up inside the Zamorakian Undercity, an area you can get to easily from the Archaeology Campus east of Varrock. Now, when you first get this item, it will not be that useful all just yet. To make it amazing, you're going to need to complete the Legacy of Zamorak quest storyline, which will not take you all that long as pretty much all the quests part of the series are quickly completable. During the process of completing that storyline, you will upgrade your puzzle box tier for tier, improving the previous tier's bonuses, and adding new ones. The most notable PVM related buffs of this item are increased damage and reduced damage taken from monsters inside the wilderness, reduced environmental bleeding damage inside Inferno, so this part of the Zamrak boss fight, and best of all, your adrenaline will no longer drain outside of combat. The final version of this item can be added to your tool belt to turn it into a passive after completing the quest finale called Succession. Completing that exact same storyline unlocks the second free PVM lock in this list, being the Dive Ability. So by completing that storyline, which doesn't have very much requirements, you would be hitting two birds with one stone. The dive ability is similar to the surge and escape abilities, except it can be aimed to launch you at a very specific tile. It's hard to quantify how useful this ability is, as it's going to not only allow you to move around the world about 20% faster compared to just moving with surge, but it's also incredibly useful for PVM. For example, moving inside a Telos beam or flying onto a Zamorak pad. This ability can be upgraded to the Bladed Dive ability, which will allow you to deal damage against enemies you target when wielding a weapon and launching towards them, which will require 63 million Shattered Anima from the Shattered Worlds minigame. The next unlock on this list is going to be one of the most important unlocks for your account, period. And not just for PVM. It's unlocking one of RuneScape's newest areas called Fort Farinfri. This fort, which you can start building in the Zero Requirements quest, has a bunch of different buildings that you can build with the construction skill to provide you with a bunch of benefits, ranging from quality of life features, offline experience, and increased Slayer damage. While this is more so a skilling hub than a combat hub, if you complete these three quests, you can build the Guardhouse building. The first version of that building, requiring level 50 construction, gives you 1% extra damage on Slayer tasks, or 2% if they are undead creatures, in addition to giving you a higher chance of spawning elites, which have a higher rare drop rate. The max version of this building has even more benefits, including a 3% chance to execute non-boss Slayer task creatures with ultimate abilities, and 10% increased damage against Slayer targets below 25% life points. Additionally, it provides a 6% higher elite spawn rate and a 5% higher chance of capturing creature souls for your personal own Slayer dungeon if you have level 99 Slayer. Perhaps one of the easiest unlocks on this list is to unlock the essential ultimate abilities called Natural Instinct, Sunshine, and Death Swiftness. All you need to do to obtain these abilities, other than having the required level to use them, is to complete a 45 minute long quest called The World Wakes. Now this quest has no requirements other than some combat gear to take down a few enemies, and with my guide, linked below, it's very easy. Sunshine and Death Swiftness are two abilities that every player should be using, as they are the baseline ability to every ability rotation in the game. Why? They increase your damage by 50% for 30 seconds. This can be increased to nearly 38 seconds with a planted feet switch 
or the greater version of this ability, but both of those things cost money. Natural Instinct is an ability that doubles your adrenaline gain, which is useful for when you have excess adrenaline before a part of a fight where you know you're going to need to build up or use adrenaline quickly, like before a Zuck challenge wave. The next unlock on this list works nicely in combination with the abilities I just mentioned, as after using an ability such as Sunshine, you will start with 10% adrenaline instead of 0%. It's the Ring of Vigor, an item you can obtain by having 50,000 Dungeoneering tokens and level 62 in attack and Dungeoneering. This item is just as essential as the before mentioned abilities as it benefits you every single time you use an ultimate ability as you retain that 10% adrenaline. It also gives you the ability to use special attacks at 90% of their adrenaline cost. So instead of 50% adrenaline, it would require 45% adrenaline to activate the Zaros Godsword, for example. Best of all is that this item can be turned into a passive after completing the Extinction Quest, which would remove the need to switch to this item every time you want to use its benefits, or free up the ring slot for a different ring such as the next ring on this list, the Asylum Surgeon's Ring. The Asylum Surgeon's Ring rocks some solid stats and has a useful adrenaline saving passive. The ring has a 10% chance to prevent adrenaline loss when using threshold abilities and a 40% chance of saving a fourth, so 25% of a special tax adrenaline cost. This effect works after the reduction from the passive ring of vigor, if owned, to work in your favor. So a special attack requiring 50% adrenaline is reduced to 45% thanks to the ring of vigor passive, and if the surgeon ring procs, it is reduced to 33.75%. The ring is unlocked by completing the broken home quest in under 37 minutes after the initial completion. There are plenty of guides on YouTube to assist you in unlocking this ring. So you know how I mentioned Fort Farin 3 being a skilling hub? Well, the PVM hub, also known as War's Retreat, is the exact opposite. Once you hit level 60 combat or 1000 total level, you gain access to the PVM hub, which you can access from this area near the Drain or Lodestone. The PVM hub can give you access to a direct bank teleport permanent fire that provides you a bonfire boost, an altar that allows you to replenish prayer and summoning points, adrenaline crystals to charge your adrenaline, and boss portals to teleport straight to a boss without actually having to walk there after getting your very first kill. Now you will not have access to all these mentioned bonuses straight away, but by getting certain boss kill count thresholds, you will unlock these benefits in addition to another currency called Marks of War. Marks of War can be used to buy PVM ore such as the Maniacal ore that will increase your damage and accuracy, or lower tier ore such as the Vampirism ore which will heal you for part of the damage you deal. Many useful abilities are locked behind some kind of activity and the Anima Island abilities are no different. The main two abilities you want to get from this minigame are Devotion and Tusker's Wrath, although Devotion can also be unlocked from Killing Goddard's Dungeon 1 minions like these orcs which are probably a lot faster. Devotion reduces all damage taken from the combat style you are praying against to 1 for 9.6 seconds, which can be extended by killing enemies to a maximum of 19.2 seconds. This is useful for many AFK slay creatures and for pretty much any boss. Tusker's Wrath deals 10,000% of your slayer level as damage to your target when on slayer task, essentially making it your strongest ability when on slayer task. Unlocking abilities at the Anima Islands takes a while though, as every game of 20 minutes gives you a maximum of 1,000 points if done correctly. A guide for this minigame will be linked in the description below. Since we're on the topic of abilities anyway, another quest you should complete early on is the dig side quest. This quest unlocks four abilities being the tendril abilities for each combat style and the ice asylum ability. While the latter is not all that useful, the tendril abilities are. The melee and magic variants are useful when using certain high tier weapons, but the ranged version is much more usable called Shadow Tendril. After Snapshot and Rapid Fire, it will be your third best threshold to use in a damage rotation, as it's much stronger than the Bombardment ability. Now, I know I'm talking a lot about quests, but at least they are free. The City of St. Tistan quest, not to be confused with the Temple of St. Tistan quest, which is also useful to do, is a quest that will unlock the best magic spells in the game, like Exanguinate and Insight Fear. It also unlocks a defensive spell called Animate Dead, which will reduce damage based on your defense level and armor bonus when wielding magic tank armor, beneficial for learners 
and for AFK Slayer methods. While an anime dead nerf is in the talks and testing, it will still be incredibly powerful after these nerfs and a must-have unlock. Now, if you're ever sad about not being able to afford an Amulet of Souls or even better, an Essence of Finality Amulet, well, then I have good news for you. One of the strongest Amulets in the game is completely free, and it's called the Dragon Rider Amulet. This amulet provides you with a solid strength bonus, best in class prayer bonus, and a 10% damage buff to the Dragon Breath ability with an additional 10% chance to burn your opponent with a bleeding effect that will hit your opponent for an additional three times. The only downside to this amulet is that you're going to need to do a good amount of questing before you can unlock it, as it requires the one-of-a-kind quest. Another solid amulet to unlock, albeit a situational one, is the Salve Amulet more specifically the enchanted version. This ammo provides you with a 20% damage and accuracy buff when fighting undead creatures. Think revenants, armored phantoms, enemies inside Elite Dungeon 3 such as zombies and necromancers, and even the Barrows and Rise of the Six Bosses since a recent update. To unlock this amulet, all you need to do is complete the Haunted Mine quest and complete the Layer of Tarn Razalor mini quest to enchant it. With that being said, we've covered the majority of free PVM unlocks, and while I know the fort isn't technically free to build, it is free to unlock it. Because of that exception, I'd also like to give an honorable mention to the full Slayer Helmet, which is one of the most useful PVM items in the game, unlock using Slayer Points, but requires some money to create. It provides you a 12.5% plus extra damage and accuracy when on Slayer task, in addition to many more buffs, but since it costs money to create, I excluded it from the initial list. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it interesting. If you did, leave a like down below and maybe even consider subscribing. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.